Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to carry out a Gompertz regression in Stata. In order to do so, the first thing we'll do is we'll load the KVA dataset that Stata documentation uses for uh, survival models. And what this is is a generator, generator experiment and we see that there's a fail time for each of 12 generators measured in hours. And what we're interested in is the effect of load measured as overload in KVA and bearings on fail time. Uh, note that bearings is a dummy variable with zero indicating that a particular generator does not have new bearings and one indicating that new bearings are present. Now these data have already been ST set so we don't have to worry about doing an ST set to indicate that fail time is our variable of interest so just uh, keep that in mind. Here's how we're going to fit a Gompertz regression model on these data. Because as I said uh, fail time has already been ST set we will just enter the command ST reg followed by our two independent variables load and bearings comma D for distribution and in the parentheses Gompertz. And here by the way we could also have used a Weibull if we were interested in in that distribution and let's go ahead and run the model. So we see that it's significant and we get these two columns which are of particular interest we see that every one unit increase in load is associated with uh, about a uh, two times greater chance that the generator uh, will fail and because the hazard ratio for bearings is below one and because a bearings value off one indicates that new bearings are present we would interpret this hazard ratio as meaning that new bearings reduce the hazard of a machine failing and we know that because the hazard ratio here is below one. So we can do a couple of things after we fit the model. We can go ahead and do uh, an Akai Keys information criterion fit here and get that value and by the way if we did a Weibull regression version of the same data we would get a higher uh, Akai Keys information criterion so actually uh, um, Gompertz regression is an excellent model for these data, even better than a Weibull regression. Now, in order for this to make sense to you, it would help to have a couple of graphics. So let's do let's do two. First, I'm going to do a hazard graphic, and then after that, I'm going to do a survival graphic. They're they're subtly different. Well, not so subtle actually. They're they're quite different, but you will see that they help you understand what's really going on in a survival regression model of this kind and what it means to analysis. So the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to use the command st curve comma and then I'm going to specify hazard because I'm interested in the hazard function more so than survival. Then using these commands at 1 and at 2, I specify two values of bearings. So no new bearings versus new bearings as kind of the factors of interest. This is going to make a lot more sense when you see the hazard model. You see that the hazard is pretty low for both no bearings and new bearings uh, until about here I guess about day 110 or so and then they really start to separate and we see that uh, the hazard of the new uh, I beg your pardon the hazard of the no new bearings machines failing really goes up very very quickly here and for the machines that have new bearings it's kind of muted the risk of uh, the, the hazard increases here but by far less than for the machines that do not have uh, new bearings. Now this might be a little more uh, complicated to understand because we are talking about um, survival. We're talking about how long something goes and in the hazard function graph that you saw it might not be as easy to envision what that means with the real world data set. So I'm going to create a new graph for you here using the same command st curve except instead of hazard as my option I've chosen survival. Now I've chosen uh, four different variables, uh, variable values of interest to me. I want to see the survival uh, dynamics here for generators that have no bearings, for generators that do have bearings, for load 25 kVA and also for load 35 kVA. And I've gone ahead and tacked on scheme S1 color because I think it's a, it's a, it's a nice looking scheme. Oh and here we go. Okay so this this is quite handy. So Note that uh, 
this curve over here is for load 35, right? And we see that uh, machines that have load 35, uh, they start to fail pretty quickly. You, you can see that uh, up around just a little past day 50 in analysis time, the odds of those machines, uh, most of those machines will have failed already. Um, we see here with the zero bearings machines, that is the machines that do not have new bearings, they're further out to the right. So they're kind of outperforming the load 35 machines. And way over here to the right, we see the load 25 machines, which are the rightmost of all, right? And so basically what this graphic means is being to the right is better. The more to the right one of these curves is, the longer that particular generator is surviving, right? So you see we all, we all start here, uh, you know, roughly with the same uh, survival and rapidly we start to see divergences. Some, some types of generators are surviving uh, longer than others. So after you carry out a, a Gompertz regression, of course it's very useful to have this hazard ratio because you can interpret it in real world terms. But I think it's very useful to also either have a hazard uh, function or survival function graph uh, right afterwards because they really can help you make sense of what's going on with those survival data. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter 3 and chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter 4 uh, following a perfect chapter 3 and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.